Hi everyone, in today's video I am going to show you how to paint these adorable and believe it or not easy gnome ornaments for Christmas. So we are going to use wood slices and acrylic paint and we are going to make these beautiful little designs. So let's go ahead and get started. To draw a gnome we're going to start with an oval and then we're gonna draw a lazy sausage around the oval to make the brim of the hat. And then we're gonna make a curve. And we're gonna make a curve on the other side. And then we're gonna make a circle. And then we're going to draw an open rectangle directly underneath the hat. Then we're going to draw two half circles at the bottom of the rectangle. And now we're going to draw the beard. So for the beard, we're going to make a curving line from one side of the hat brim and have it come down and meet in a point at the center. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And now for the arms, I'm just gonna draw these little like right angles coming out of the side of the beard and meeting like by where that rectangle is. And I'll just pull my rectangles up a little more and then draw a circle on the end of each of the arms there. And that is basically how you draw a gnome. Now we're gonna do one easier version. So we're also gonna just make a gnome face right in the center of the wood slice. So this is our wood slice. I'm gonna draw the nose towards the bottom about at the one third mark, I'm gonna draw the nose. So I'm gonna just make my oval. Now I'm gonna make my hat brim. This is that lazy sausage shape. And now for the beard, it's really easy. So we're just gonna go just like that, just two curved lines extending to the bottom. And then for the hats, we're going to do the same. We're just gonna make our curving lines. Let's make this one curve the other way. And then we'll add our little circle. And so that is basically it. So those are the two um, gnomes that we're going to do on these painted ornaments today. So let's go ahead and get started. For supplies, I'm just gonna get two round paint brushes. You can use a, a flat brush if that's what you prefer. I have my plastic palette and then just some basic acrylic paints. So I'm just gonna mix some raw sienna into this white to get a flesh color. And I'm probably gonna need a little like touch of pink as well. So I'll get my red out. And just um get like a little a little little bit. Just kind of make it look flesh colored and you can um, I'll recommend a paint set that already has these mixed up so that you don't have to worry about making your own flesh color okay so let's go ahead and paint the nose you could do this um, just you could free paint it I guess but it's easier for me to just draw it on in pencil so then I have a guide to follow. I don't have to do much thinking as I'm painting. And if we end up not quite liking this color, we can add another coat and change up the tone a little bit. We'll just see how the rest of the gnome ends up looking. I'm gonna get a bigger paintbrush now. This is just like a number 
maybe like a number six round, but use whatever you're comfortable with. The smaller paintbrushes will feel more comfortable, um, but the larger paintbrushes will allow you to get the color on more evenly. So it's really just what you're comfortable with. And I tend to be comfortable with smaller paintbrushes. So that's what I use. Um, all right, I'm just gonna finish filling in his beard here. And I didn't prime this surface at all. You could if you wanted. I tried some versions where I added a layer of Mod Podge first, matte. You could also just lay down one layer of acrylic paint in any color you want. You could do white, you could do any color, honestly. It's just up to you. But I found that I actually like the way the paint sticks to the unfinished wood. It just seems a little bit easier for me to get um, the right coverage. Okay, so for his hat, I'm unsure exactly um, if we're gonna do stripes or not, but I'm just gonna fill it all in red to start. So I'm just gonna take my red and just fill in the hat part, leaving the brim alone for now. We'll fill that in after. And when you're working, I always work so that the areas that I'm working on aren't touching each other, so that you give the area you just worked on a chance to dry. So that's why I've kind of skipped over the brim because the brim touches the nose and the nose isn't dry yet. So I'm just gonna work on the hat. And again, I'm using a small, pretty small brush here. It's not a special brush. It's the brush that came with the paint set that um that I'll recommend in the description below. I am using different paints than what I'm recommending. I'm using Liquitex paints. I just like the coverage better, but the paint set that I'll recommend works just fine as well. And it has more colors than these Liquitex that I'm using that I have to I only have like five or six colors and then I have to mix them every time. Um, I want a new color or a different shade. So my brush is getting a little dry, so I'll probably go dip it in some water in a little bit. How thick, um, the thickness of the paint is really, it's a personal preference. It, depends on what you like. The thicker the paint, the more coverage. The thinner the paint, right, then you'll have to add another coat or two. Just depends on what you like. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And then maybe we'll just add some like color differentiation into the uh, hat. So maybe we'll add like a lighter. Let's move this up a little, um, a lighter red. So I'll just put a little blotch of white over there. A little bit of red, it'll make like a pink. And then maybe like in the center part of the hat we can add a little bit of that because that's where right our hat would be the lightest we'll just kind of mix it in so the center of objects is typically lighter the edges are darker so that's what I'm doing right now just making the middle of the hat a little darker. And then I'm just gonna blend it with a little bit more of the just solid red. Okay. We'll probably go back and add even some more coats in a little bit. Maybe we'll add some darker red along the 
edges of the hat here and then like right where it's coming out into that little ball. But we'll see, we'll do that later. Okay, I think I'm gonna fill in the little pom-pom on his hat even though it touches a little bit. But I'll just be careful not to touch the end of the hat. And you could make the pom-pom like, just have the edges be smooth and flat, or you could have them a little jagged so it looks like the pom-pom is fluffy. I'm just gonna do, I think, a, um, a edge that's just smooth. Even this little guy even looks like he could be Santa, right? A little Santa gnome. I'm gonna add a little bit, another coat of white to the beard because it looks like the um, paint is kind of seeping into the wood. And I'm gonna be a little textured here. So I'm just kind of dabbing really thick paint on. Maybe this will make it look like he has a little bit of a curly beard maybe. Okay. And now for the brim of his hat, I don't know, I don't want it to be white. Maybe like a, uh, like a yellow, like a yellow green maybe. Like kind of a Grinchy green, just, we need a really bright color. So I'm gonna take yellow and blue and just mix it until I get like a nice, um, a nice bright yellow green. But again, the paint set that I'm recommending will have lots of different versions so you don't have to mix yourself. I want it to be really yellowy. So I'm gonna just keep going in. Getting some yellow. Okay, this looks pretty good. Maybe a little more. Okay, that looks good. All right, the beard is still a little wet, so I'm just gonna be careful here as I add the hat brim. And the cool thing about acrylic paint is if you decide you don't like a color, um, it's opaque, so you can go over and paint it a different color on the next coat if you don't like it. And the, that comes to mind, because as I'm looking at it, I'm like, ew, the red and the green don't look that great together. But we're going to keep going with it. Maybe we can save it with the background. We'll see. Maybe the background can give us some good contrast. Gonna clean my brush off. Um, maybe add a little bit more, another layer to the little pom pom here. Okay. Okay, now we need to add a background. So maybe for the background. It could be like a real light yellow because we're going to be doing a blue background for the um the other gnome so i do want to do something a little different oh wow this is festive this green wow all right so i need a bigger no, we'll just go with this. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna color in the background now. I'm just gonna go all the way around. You could also, another way to do this is to paint your background first and then you can just paint your design over it. I just decided to do it this way in the interest of time. If you get any like fuzzies or anything, just pick them off as you go. All right, so I'm just gonna finish painting this. And I might need a little more paint to finish, but let's see how far we can get. Okay, so to add a little bit of interest here, what we can do, let me just move this, so you can see everything. I'm gonna take some of this darker green paint and just kind of flick up from the bottom, just to have some different types of colors going on. And then we're gonna add some white as well, I think. So this just gives it a little bit of interest so it's not just one flat color. And the paint is still wet, so it needs to be wet if you want to do this. Okay, let's try some white now. Maybe we'll put the white like closest to the gnome so it looks like there's like a little glow around him. bit more inside here. And again, this is just, I'm just playing. You can do this, you don't have to, it's really up to you. Okay. So now I'm gonna add another coat to his nose. So I'm gonna take that flesh color that I have that's really pink, but I'm just gonna go with it. Maybe he's been out in the cold for a long time, so that's why his nose is so pink. And then to give a little bit of like, a little bit of a highlight, I'm just gonna take a little bit of white. And I got a little too watery, so I'm just gonna jab that up. And, okay, make sure my brush is drier. <laughs> And just add a little dab of white right there. Okay. Now maybe make it look like he has some little fuzzy pom-poms. Maybe I'll add that now. All right, so for this hat brim, we gotta do something with it because I'm not really crazy about it. And the hat needs a little bit more color as well. Maybe we can give him like a candy cane stripe on his hat. Yeah, maybe that's what we'll do to dress it up a little. So the hat is dry. 
So for the candy cane stripe, let's say, maybe I'll do like, Then I'm just gonna follow the hat. I'm just gonna follow the edges, so. So do you see how I did that? I'm just following the shape of the hat. So because I started down on this side close to the brim, I'm gonna end close to the brim. Then we'll add another stripe. And then now we'll start having them go in a different direction, a little maybe just for fun. seems okay. Now I just want to mix up a little bit of a darker red. So I'm going to take some red and I'm going to add some blue to it just to get it a little darker. Oh. I am not um, like a color mixing expert by <laughs> any means. So, ooh, it actually made a nice purple. Let's go with it. I'm just gonna add a little bit of shading on the edges here, the purple. Maybe I'll put it underneath the um, the little shadow under the little edge of the hat there. Then maybe we'll put a little shadow on the edge of his beard and under the brim of the hat a little bit. The same on the other side. Now I'm going to make a little shading right where the brim meets the hat because there would be a little fold and it would look a little bit like it was in shadow. So I'm just adding that. Okay. I'm going to get my red and just pull the color out. And again, another way to do this, you don't have to do all the shading that I'm doing. You can just stop at the solid color and it will look great. I'm just, I kind of can't help myself from playing. This little tip here. Okay, and then let's see, in the beard, maybe you want a little little bit of shading. So I'm going to take the purple and a whole bunch of white to make like a kind of like a gray. Just add maybe a little shading under his nose and then maybe under the hat here and then maybe just a little bit of color on the edges, leaving that center white. 
Maybe I'll take some of the darker purple and make our shadow a little darker under the nose and under the brim of the hat. Okay. And maybe we'll give the little pom pom a little shading too. So we can add some snow around him. So, one trick if you're not crazy about where things end up, you can just add snow all over. So, I'm going to show you how to make, we're going to make a cute little snowflake. But you could just do snowflakes so i'm just gonna i mean just dots for snow so we're just gonna make a little six pointed snowflake here and then we're gonna add a little dot at the end of each one and we're gonna make these little guys in like different sizes we'll make a few of them just for decoration see how cute that looks and we'll make one down here and the snowflakes will show up wherever the, you know, the paint is the darkest, like you have the darkest value. So down in this corner, it's going to be a little hard to see because it's really yellow here. But we'll add them anyway. And then maybe we'll add another one over here. basically like an X with um, a line through the middle. That's the, the shape for the snowflakes. Okay, so I'm gonna just use three. I think it's always good to, when you're adding elements, to do it in odd number. So like one, three, five, seven, not two, four, six. So that's why I'm only adding three snowflakes. And then I'm just gonna add some dotted snow throughout. If you want it to look like he's in the snowstorm, you could add snow on top of his face but we're going to make it look like the snow is behind him for this one and then for the next gnome that we do we'll put him in the middle of the snowstorm so i'll show you both versions and techniques like when you have the snow behind the image and when you have the snow covering the image so just gonna add a few more little dots Okay, that looks good. One thing I didn't do was add like the, um, the, the knit part of his cap. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna take my green. Can you see that? The green, I just need to darken it up a little. So I'm gonna add, let's add some of the brown. It should make a, let's give us a darker shade. Maybe I'll add some purple. Let's see what that does. That's giving us like an olive green. It needs to be a little darker. Add some blue. I'm just, um, I'm just looking for something that's a little darker than the green. That is the hat brim. And again, you'll be using this set that has the colors mixed, so you don't have to do this. Okay. Get my paintbrush prepared. And then I'm just gonna make like little C's, like backward C's from the right side until we get to the middle. And then we're gonna reverse them and have them go in the other direction. So when we get to the brim of the hat, it's gonna be straight up and down. And then to the right of it, it's gonna be curve one way and then when we get to the other side of the nose like when we're off center we'll start curving them the other way okay all right I'm just gonna get a smaller paintbrush And uh, 
<clears throat> and we're just gonna kind of just fix up the, maybe I'll add some shading around here with my green. I'm just cleaning up the edges now. And to brighten it up, I'm just gonna do one final thing. I'm just gonna add like little flecks of white in the center between the two dark lines, just to, cause I just feel like it's too dark, um, the brim of the hat. So I just wanna lighten it up a little. So I'm just gonna Add that, it just gives just a little pop of um, something. I like it, no, all right. And on the pom-pom here, I want it a little bit more white there. Okay. And now it looks perfect to me. So I think our little gnome is done. So I am going to add a sealer to it. I have Mod Podge and I have a matte and I have a gloss. I'm gonna add a gloss sealer to it once he dries. So I'm gonna put him aside for now and now let's work on the second gnome. All right, so we're gonna start off the same way that we did with the other. We're gonna do his nose. So, I'm just going to grab that peach color I mixed up and just fill in his nose. I think for this guy, we're going to give him, well, I'm not going to talk. I won't speak too soon. We'll just see what color we end up making his hat brim. Maybe we'll make his hat brim white and then his beard gray. How about that? Okay, and I'm gonna break one of my rules. I'm gonna go paint the brim of the hat even though it's right by the nose, but I'm gonna be careful not to touch the, the nose so the colors don't smear. With acrylic paint, it's not like watercolor where if you touch watercolors together, they'll just spread everywhere. Acrylic won't do that. It'll just, um, it'll just be a little sloppy. So it's actually acrylics are more for giving them watercolor. I usually work with watercolor. This is my first time really using acrylics on my own. Like I've taken classes at Pino's palette and things like that for like paint and sip classes. But this is my first time really doing the acrylics just in one of my projects. And I really like it, I have to say. It's very forgiving, it dries quickly. So I may be doing some more acrylic in my personal projects. Okay, all right, I like that. I like the white hat brim. I think that looks really cute. And then for a gray beard, we'll take the white and then we're gonna need a lot of it. So we'll mix it over by this purple color over here. I'll have like a purpley beard, that'll be fun. Well, it is nighttime, so it could look like it's... like in shadow. But what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put down this base of it's like a, it's turning out to be like a light purple and then we're gonna put white over it. Um, and then it'll look great. And if you're home, you can just use white here if you don't want to get too fancy. Or you can use gray, the gray that's in the, um, the paint set that I'm recommending or the gray that you have at home. So I only bought the primary colors and then a couple of secondary colors because I wasn't sure how much I was going to like the acrylics, but I really like it. But I also like not having a million bottles on my desk. So maybe even though I'm not the best at it, 
I'll keep mixing like I'm doing here. Um, and I guess I'll get better at it as I go along, right? That's how it works with practice. Okay, now I'm just gonna add some flicks of white to make it look like a hair. I like that. I like how this turned out. Maybe we'll get some more white over here, like by where the mustache would be. And I'm just flicking downwards towards the middle. Okay. That looks good. Now let's work on his hat. So we'll give him, we did a red hat the last time. Should we do a different color? Maybe we'll do red again, but a lighter red. So let's um, mix some red and take the red. And then I'm gonna add some white to it. So we'll make like a pink, a lot like a pink hat. Okay, why not? I think he'd be like a Valentine's known in the forest. We are gonna also put a forest around him as well. You don't have to if you don't want to, but I'm gonna give you the option just to show you how to do a different background other than the, the snowy background that we just did. You could also leave the wood showing. I have a bunch of ornaments where I didn't add any background, I just allowed the wood to show, and that is really nice as well. Okay. So I don't often do these real-time tutorials. I often will film and then I'll edit and I'll speed things up and then I'll do a voiceover. So this is new to me. So you'll have to let me know in the comments how this worked for you. All right, let's make his, let's have, let's let him have a matching outfit. So we'll give him pink clothes as well. And then maybe some brown shoes. Um, another thing that you could do with these guys is you could, if you want it to have like a cartoon feel, when you're, o when you're finished and when it's dry, you could go over the outline with a black Sharpie and then that will really help to define the edges and give it like a real cartoon type look. I'm not sure if we're going to do that yet. I think we're just going to go with the paint. Like with um, no, I guess no line. Okay, this little um, pom pom, we're gonna make it white. And the cool thing is because we're gonna have a forest behind him, this could even look like, you know, when you look at it quickly, like a moon peeking out from the, from the distance. Okay, okay. oh, I forgot to do his hands. So let's just get that peach and we'll paint his hands. Paint this hand too, and then we'll go over his nose again. A little more to his hands. Okay, now let's do his shoes. So I have this brown from before, so I'm just gonna use that. See how it looks. 
This is um, raw sienna. This is a good color to have if you like drawing like any kind of nature painting. So like trees, reefs, you could use this for. Um, it's also, this is a good color for gingerbread or like coffee. So it's a, it's a good color to have around. All right, now we're gonna put, draw the background. Let me just fix this pom-pom first. And we'll have a chance for all the white, we will add another coat of white to make sure it's nice and dark. I really like the white brim on the, on the gnome's hat. I just think it's nice to have that pop of color like right in the center of the, of the painting. It really pops. Okay. All right, so for the background, we're going to make snow and then a sky. So this bottom's gonna be white and I'm going to just decide where I want my snow to go. So I want it to be like a little hilly and then going up the side. And then we're gonna do the, have it meet like the same on the other side, maybe a little different direction of a hill. And I always like for these wood slices when it goes like up the side, it just makes it look like you're, you know, making the most of the surface that you're painting on by following the curve instead of like having it go down or have it just be flat across. So I'm just going to be careful because we did just paint these other areas. But we'll have a chance to clean it up too because we'll probably add another layer to our shoes and our hands and we'll add some shading to the clothes in a little bit. So don't worry if we go over any of the little objects with some of the white, we'll fix it. That is one of the other things I really love about acrylic, that it is forgiving. Like watercolor, my usual medium is not so forgiving. Or before watercolor, it was Copic markers, which are not forgiving at all. So I kind of started with the least forgiving mediums, and then I guess I'm working my way to the easier ones. All right. So we have our first layer of snow. Now we need the sky behind him. So let's see. We have this blue here. Maybe let's make it a little darker. Um, maybe we can add some. Oh, maybe a little black to it to make it dark. Put some black over here. Sorry, that's not enough. Okay. All right. Let's put a little, little bit just to darken it up. I think that's good. All right. Oh, it's really dark. That's okay. We'll go with it. And we'll do that little trick that we did before where we'll add some white um, streaks and mix that in just to give the night sky a little variation of color. Just being careful around these edges here. And if you do end up having like a lot of spots where maybe your dark background bled into your images, then using a Sharpie is a good idea because the Sharpie can help clean things up. I did that with the Snoopy painting um, that I showed, that I posted earlier, and I'll, I'll show that in a little bit to give you a sense of how I fixed that. But also for Snoopy, for the peanuts, they do have, they are cartoons, so they do have the black lines around them. So that's the, that's how you would paint them anyway. So I am having so much fun painting these wood slices. If there's any requests that you have, 
be sure to drop that in the comments and I will do my best to um, maybe try to make a sample. As long as it's something that's, you know, within my skill level and something that I can um, teach others to make as well. Because there might be some things where I could technically pull it off, but maybe it's too difficult for me to be able to explain. Okay, I need a little more. Should I try to? Yeah, I don't think I'm going to make it. Okay. Take a little of the black. Okay. And we were going to lighten things up anyway, so maybe we'll try like a little lighter um, over here. See how that goes. Okay, so now let's take a little of the white. It still is um, wet and just like around the gnome. We'll just add some of that color. The closest to him and just blend it outwards. And I like, I'm just going like in a circular motion just to make it look like it's windy and cold. Okay. And I kind of love how that looks. I think I'm going to leave that little corner dark. All right. So let's go back to our gnome and work on him a little bit while the background is drying. Um, maybe I'll add a little white highlight to the nose. And that out a little. Um, let's see his hands. I need a little more paint there. Yes. Then I'm going to take the red and just add some shading. So just like almost like a dry brush. I'm just adding some little streaks here. And then a little strip of red right along the edge. A little bit more. Okay. Maybe just a little over here, I'd like to make like a fold in the hat. I'm just adding little crease. Just follow it. Okay. Then I think we need a little more pink over here just to build out the edge a little bit. Let's work on the edge of the hat. Okay. All right. And now maybe we'll add some of that red shading on the side of his body as well. So. Okay. Maybe under his beard and the crook of his arm there. All right, and I think that looks, maybe on the outside here, his leg. I think that looks good. I think we have enough shading. 
I do think we need a little more color by his hands, so I'm gonna just mix a little bit of that flesh color. A little darker. Let's see. And then add it to the nose also. Okay. And I like how that looks. For his beard, I think his beard looks really great, but maybe we'll just add a few more white streaks. Just very few, just coming up from the bottom. Maybe just a little. Okay, that looks good. And then I do want a little shadow under the brim of a hat. I'm gonna take that blue for the sky and just I'm gonna run it underneath there. Just on the edge, just a little, little bit. And then right under the nose. And again, it's like just the faintest, faintest bit. Just to make it pop a little bit and we'll do it around the top of the nose as well. Okay. Now let's work on this little pom-pom. Okay. Um, you can add a little of that lilac color from before just to make like um, a little shading. Okay, that looks good. All right, um, let's fix the, let's add another coat of white to the brim of the hat. Just clean it up. just want a little more shading just right here right on the edge like where the brim of the hat and the hat meet I might have a lot of water on my brush so I'm just gonna fix that All right, so now we're gonna draw a couple of trees. It's nice and dry on this side. Oh, I do wanna add a little more snow to the bottom. So let's just add one more coat here. And we do have to add another coat to the um, shoes. a little bit of a shadow in the snow under his feet. So I'm gonna take that blue and just, right under his feet. Just mix it right in. And then we'll darken his shoes up a little bit. I feel like they need even like a darker brown. Maybe I'm gonna take some 
of the black and add it to the brown, make a darker brown. Maybe even almost like a black, just because I do want those shoes to just not like fade into the background. Okay. That's good. All right, so we're gonna just let this dry for a moment and then we'll add some trees. All right, for the tree, I'm gonna get my light brown again. Um, let's put it right over here. I'm not using this color anymore. And we're just gonna add like a curved line. They're gonna be like very bare, skinny trees in the background. We'll just have it curve, like following the curve of the wood slice a little bit. I won't even go behind his head. And if these end up looking too light, we'll just go over them with a darker color. But let's just get the shapes of the trees in for now. We'll add another one. Maybe going off this way. And then one like in the distance behind him. couple over here and we're going to be careful to make them go behind the gnome because he's standing in front of them so all these images will just kind of curve around him or behind him and there's one back here as well barely see it Okay, I like how that looks. It's kind of like very ghostly almost. So I'm just gonna add some shading to the trees just to make them a little darker. Some of them, some of them I'm gonna leave in that color so it looks like they're really far away. All right, that looks good to me. We have enough trees and now we're gonna add the snow and we're going to make our little gnome look like he is in the middle of the snowstorm. So we're gonna add the snow right over him. Just big, heavy drops. So I'll put my snow on him first and then we'll just work our way out to the rest of the scene. And again, the snow is gonna show up the best like um, on the darker colors. So on the white brim of his hat, that's, you know, not gonna show up. On his beard, it'll show up a little. On, his, on the hat, it'll definitely show up. On the shoes, it will. And then this is also a good time, like if you notice any imperfections, you can just put a little dollop of snow over it. So if there's like, I don't know, a line that you don't like. Like, I don't like how that looks there. I'll just put some snow over it. And I love how the snow looks like on the really dark background. Look at how gorgeous that is. 
and I'm just being really random about where I'm dropping them. I start with my big drops and then we'll go on and add some smaller drops or drops of snow, flakes of snow. Yes, that's what I meant. Add some smaller flakes on him too. And if you wanted, you could add those little star-shaped snowflakes that we made on the last gnome. That would work also. But, oh, I didn't get enough on the tip of his hat. More on his body. Okay. That is going to do it. So now we have made two beautiful little painted gnome ornaments. How awesome is that? This guy, let's see if he's dry. He is dry, so I'm going to show you how to put the Mod Podge on it. Um, I am going to use a glossy Mod Podge. So I just open up my jar. I have a special brush that I use just for Mod Podging. I'm going to get clean water. We can even add, since it's dry, we can even add the little um, ornament hook. So let's go ahead. I have this red and white twine that I love for Christmas ornaments. And I think it matches the colors really nice here. So I'm just gonna kind of feed it through the back. Just keep pressing and tie it in a knot. Okay, and there's our little ornament hook. So now let's add our Mod Podge layer. So I have clean water over here. Always use clean water when you're Mod Podging. Like, um, and then I'm just gonna dip my brush in the container and then just add a thin coat right over top. And I could even go right over the top of that little string, that's fine. And then that's it. And then our little ornament will be sealed and he'll be glossy because this is a glossy matte. Um, not a glossy matte, it's a glossy finish. If you like matte, you could use the matte hodge po hodgepodge, modge pod, mod podge, sorry. <laughs> okay, and so he's gonna dry and look beautiful. And the picture for the thumbnail will have what he looks like when he's all dry, so just wait for that. And this guy, let's see if he's dry yet. No, he's gonna have to dry a little bit. So I will Mod Podge him off camera. Um, and that's it everyone, thanks. And I hope you give these guys a try and let me know what other types of um, scenes you'd like me to paint.